I think about this. What if I had been a person in Mecca? Suppose I wasn't a Christian. Suppose I was a pagan. And this guy comes and says, your gods are great. Your pagan, false, your pagan gods are great. In fact, it's good to pray to them. Those gods can go to Allah. I, and, and I say, oh, wow, cool. This guy's supporting my beliefs. And then he comes back later and says, oh, no, no, sorry. Satan, made, tra Satan tricked me into saying that. And Allah now tells me through Gabriel that, uh, you know, I shouldn't have said that to begin with. I would think, there's no way I'm ever going to believe in this guy. Yeah. Uh, as a pagan, I would have to reject this. Now, I'm not a pagan, I'm a Christian, and so I, I have much more reason to reject Muhammad because he contradicts the gospel and because, according to the Bible, that, what he did there, guarantees him as a false prophet. But if I weren't, if I were a pagan or anything else, I would have to reject Muhammad. If he's coming to me and he's all wishy-washy with whether, mm. and he can't tell the difference between a revelation from God mm. and a revelation from Satan, and I would just ask you Muslims, if Muhammad couldn't tell the difference between a revelation from God and a revelation from Satan, why do you believe in Surah 1? From the beginning. Why do you believe in Surah 2? Why do you believe in any of it? Yeah. Why do you believe in any of this? This is a man who can't tell the difference. We know that. We know he can't tell the difference, according to him, according to your sources. And you say, trust him no matter what, in spite of the evidence. Yeah. The Quran's the word of God. The Quran's the word of God. The Quran's the word of God. That's what we heard in the last program. And according to your own sources, Muhammad couldn't tell the difference between a revelation from Allah and a revelation from the devil. He just couldn't tell. Not just here, but when he first supposedly received revelations, the same problem, was it not? <laughs> yeah, so you've got a guy not only who from is admittedly, a, a person who is admittedly delivering revelations from the devil, but you also, we also know from Muslim sources that Muhammad's first impression of his revelations was that they were satanic and demonic in origin. He became suicidal. And we could go further. Muhammad was the victim of black magic later in life. Right. For a period of between six months and two years, Muhammad's going around acting weird with false beliefs and delusional thoughts about sex with wives when he didn't have, it, have sex with them that time. Uh, and his explanation was that he was, he was, there was a spell on him. The, the Jews had cast a black magic spell on him. This is who you're telling me to trust with my eternal salvation? Yeah. This man, a man who delivers revelations from the devil, thinks he's demon-possessed and is the victim of black magic? Mm. Come on, guys. Mm. You've got to do yeah. better than this. Thank you, Brother David. Before we go to the calls, any summary statements from Brother Sam? Yeah, uh, again, uh, as is my habit, I pray in Jesus' name that David has been accurate and that he'll continue to be so. And I pray we'll all be accurate to yes. glorify Jesus Christ and the power yes. of the Holy Spirit by speaking the truth. I just want you to do something for the audience, uh, Pastor Joe. Yes. He told us what the verses in chapter 53 initially said. Yeah. Chapter 53, verses 19 to 20, initially praised the daughters of Allah, uh, Banat Allah, and said that they were high-flying uh, cranes, Al-Gharanik, and their intercession was accepted by Allah. However, if you don't mind, so that the audience can see uh, what the present text of the Quran says about the existence of the daughters of Allah. Okay. Uh, chapter 53, verses 19 to 20, what does it say about their existence in the present text of the Quran? Do they exist, or are they just... Um, 19 through 23? You can read 19 to 20 as well, 23 if you want. 19 to 20. Yes. Uh, have you seen... This is uh, Ibn Musaddis, that is to <laughs> say, uh, Yusuf Ali. Have you seen Lot and Uzza, and another, the third, goddess, in parentheses, Manat? Yeah, then continue right after 20, then. What, for you... The male sex, and for him, the female. In other words, you want male children, because, you know, you frown upon having daughters, yeah. but you want to attribute daughters to Allah, and then all the way to 23, what else does it say? Behold, such would be indeed a division most unfair. Right. These are nothing but names which ye have devised, ye and your fathers, for which Allah has sent down no authority. They follow nothing but conjecture. These are nothing but what? These are nothing but names. In the present form of the Quran, it seems to deny the existence of these goddesses, saying these are nothing but names you conjured up. They don't exist. That's right. right. But here's the confusion. Initially, Muhammad acknowledged their existence. Mm -hmm. When he recited the verses that he claimed Saint inspired him to recite, put on his tongue, he acknowledged that they existed. In the present text of the Quran, here, the author of the Quran says that these goddesses do not exist. These are just names that you conjured up. Right. But now, to add to the confusion, to provide corroboration for the satanic verses that Brother David narrated, uh, did a wonderful job of summing up the evidence. This comes from the history of Al-Tabari, Volume 8, The Victory of Islam. You can actually get this. It's translated in English. The History of Al-Tabari, The Victory of Islam, Volume 8, pages 187 to 188. Let me read this narration because this is going to confuse the situation. At first, Muhammad said these goddesses existed. 
the text in what she read uh, implies they don't exist because these are names that they simply conjured up. But this narration says they do exist. Now watch. In this year, five nights before the end of Ramadan, Khalid ibn Walid, Khalid ibn Walid destroyed Al-Uzza in the lowland of Nakhla. He destroyed Al-Uzza. Now you think this means that he destroyed the idol. But let's continue. Al-Uzza was an idol of the uh, Banu Shayban. Banu Shayban, a subdivision of Sulaim, uh, allies of the Banu Hashim. The Banu Asad bin Abdul Uzza used to say it was their idol. Khalid set out for it, and then he said, I have destroyed it. So he destroyed the idol. The messenger of Allah said, did you see anything? No, said Khalid. Then the messenger said, go back and destroy it. But wait, he just destroyed the idol. But Muhammad said, no, go back and destroy it. If you're confused, just hold on. So Khalid returned to the idol, destroyed its temple, and broke the idol. The keeper began saying, rage, O Uzza, the one who used to keep her temple, with one of thy fits of rage, whereupon a naked, wailing Ethiopian woman came out before him. A naked, black Ethiopian woman came out, wailing before Khalid. Khalid killed her, killed her dead, took her jewels that were on her. Then he went to the messenger of Allah and gave him a report of what happened. That was Al-Uzza. Mm. Did you catch that? The naked. This Ethiopian naked woman that Khalid killed was actually Al-Uzza herself, which means that Muhammad believed she actually existed. Mm. Now, I'm really confused. Are these simply names they conjured up? Or are these actual gods that took on human appearance and really existed? Because if they don't exist, how could Muhammad say that by killing this black Ethiopian woman, Khalid killed Al-Uzza herself? Mm, mm. And that's History of Al-Tabri, The Victory of Islam, Volume 8, pages 187-188. I'm confused, uh, Pastor Chairman. I'm confused. Maybe some of the Muslims that call in uh, can help us and straighten us out. And you know, the whole thing is confusing in the sense that the whole chapter, Surah Al-Najm, uh, is, is in the name, not of Allah, Really, but in the name of the star, because the first ayah in the Quran, actually uh, in, in Surah 53, is Wa al Najm. You know, Arabs say Wallah. You know what that means? When oh you God. say Wallah, that means by Allah. <laughs> We're swearing by Allah. Unfortunately, in Iraq, the Muslims, it doesn't mean anything. When they say Wallah, you get nervous, right? Uh, but they say Wallah. Well, here it says Wa al Najm. Yeah. By the name, uh, by the star. I swear by the star. What's this about? Well, we shouldn't be surprised when he's talking about Lat, Manat, and Uzzah when he's swearing by the star. Can I also uh, just, I don't want to take too yeah. much time because we have calls. Yeah, we go the to Quran, the Quran. All throughout the Quran, and I challenge the Christians and the Muslims to go back and study this. And by the way, all these details, all this information that Brother David provided and the information I'm providing are available on both his blog and our website that we write for. AnsweringMuslims.com. In fact, when you go to AnsweringMuslims.com, David has a debate that he held with a Muslim in London concerning the satanic verses. So you can watch a live debate that he had with a Muslim named Adnan Rashid, who tried to refute the historicity of the satanic verses. So go there and watch the debate. And you can also go to the website Answering-Islam.org. Answering-Islam.org. All this information, all these deta details are available on these websites for you to search and investigate. All throughout the Quran, Allah, who's supposedly the one speaking the Quran, he authored the Quran according to Muslims, is swearing by things other than himself. For example, Allah swears by the life of Muhammad, Surah 1572. Verily by thy life. So he's swearing by the life of Muhammad. It, he also swears by the Quran. I swear by the Quran, full yeah. of wisdom, Surah 36.2. What right. about the nun? nun. Yeah, he, he swears by, <laughs> by Allah swearing by various creatures, by the stars, the moon, the, the sun. Pin. And by the pen, he swears by various things. 